empirical formula, which is the simplest formula. And we're trying to get the empirical formula of magnesium oxide. What is the empirical formula for magnesium oxide? MGO. MGO. Now we're going to do this experimentally, which means we are going to take some magnesium as a solid. We are going to burn it in oxygen as a gas to make magnesium oxide. We are going to balance our equation, and we're going to have two magnesiums and two magnesium oxides. This is the reaction that we want. And what we want out of this at the end of the day is to see if we can experimentally get this formula. To get this formula, we know that this is the simplest ratio of moles of magnesium to moles of, work with me, oxygen. And again, that's not O2, that's the O atom, right? Okay, so how are we going to do this? We are going to start out by finding how much magnesium we have and then see how much product we have and see if we can get the ratio. We are also going to try to get the theoretical yield. What is the theoretical yield? What we expect to produce. What we expect to produce. This is the grams of magnesium oxide expected. Which may not be the grams of magnesium oxide in reality. At the end of this, we are also going to measure the actual yield. What is the actual yield? What's your given? Actual yield is what we actually... Given. No. Get. Get. We're going to do an experiment, right? We are actually going to weigh out magnesium oxide. And the amount of magnesium oxide we get at the end of the experiment is the... Which yield? Actual yield. Actual yield. Are we cool? We're going to predict the theoretical. We're going to measure ourselves the actual. So to do this, we are going to start out with a crucible. A crucible is simply a nice porcelain container. This is our crucible. There we go. Crucible. And we're going to need a lid. I would like you to weigh these guys separately. You can also weigh them together if you like, but we need them separately because the most common thing we do in this experiment is drop and break the lids. So weigh these guys separately. When we do this, we're going to take and we're going to add some magnesium. We're going to add a known amount of magnesium because what we're going to do after we've weighed our crucible and, we're, and our lid is we're going to add our magnesium and we are going to re-weigh. So we're going to have our crucible our lid and our magnesium pieces in here and we are going to reweigh. And then we're going to do our experiment because we have a container with our magnesium and we're going to try to get some oxygen added. But there's a major problem because we are not burning this in oxygen. We are burning this in air. What is air? Mixture. Mixture. How about mostly nitrogen? Is there mostly nitrogen? Yes. Yes. Well, if magnesium can react with the oxygen, can the magnesium also react with the nitrogen? Yes. Yes, that's a problem. That's a side reaction. A side reaction are things that are going to occur naturally because of the environment that mostly make our lives very difficult and take the stuff that we want away and make stuff we don't want, which in this case will be magnesium nitride. So there's going to be a number of steps in the experiment where we get rid of the products we don't want. But we're going to do this here in air, so we're going to get oxide and nitride. In order to get just magnesium oxide at the end, we're going to have to add some water and get rid of our nitride products. Are we cool? Say yes. 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 Thank you. All right. How are we going to do this? <clears throat> we are going to start by getting ourselves a setup. The setup is going to be a nice ring. So we're going to take our ring and put it onto our ring stand. And our ring is what's going to hold the crucible and the lid. So you're going to take away your crucible and your lid. When you do these, this one happens to be nice and clean and new, but there are some back there that are really dirty. Whatever you do, don't get these wet. If you get them wet, the bottom is porous and they will crack or explode. So we're going to take, and if they're dirty, we just scrape them out very gently and throw them out. Check the bottom for cracks. 
If there's any cracks in this, it will break as you cook and we simply need to throw them out. If you're not sure, bring it to me and show me and I will take a look and make sure there's no cracks. So, crucible and lid. So we're gonna start out by weighing these. Use the same balance throughout your entire experiment and always weigh it at room temperature. If you weigh anything hot, there's air currents going around and the air currents are gonna change the weight. Weigh stuff at room temperature. All right, so we're gonna have a crucible and our lid. You're gonna grab yourself a piece of magnesium. All the stuff for the setup is in the back. When you've grabbed yourself your piece of magnesium, it is kind of dirty and grubby looking. And what I need you to do is get it nice and clean. You're gonna get it nice and clean by sanding it. We're gonna take a little piece of sandpaper, and we are so cheap, we put our sandpaper back when we're done. All right, you know that. And we're gonna take and sand this. So we're gonna sand this nice and clean until the oxides are gone and it's mostly shiny. At that point, we need to break it into small enough pieces that we can cook it. You can either actually break this with your fingers or cut it with a piece of scissors. And I'm serious, you can just take and break it. It is very soft. If you don't want to do that, you can take a piece of scissors or a pair of scissors and you can simply cut it up. So take where you're working on some place that you can contain it and cut your magnesium into pieces. When I say pieces, I'm talking about a quarter of an inch. They will go sailing everywhere because this stuff is springy. And when you're done with that, take your pieces of magnesium and put them in the crucible. Once you have your pieces of magnesium in the crucible, I need you to go over and reweigh it because we have to have our starting mass of our crucible, our lid, and our magnesium. Once we have that, we're ready to start our experiment. To start our experiment, step one is we have long hair, pull it. Back, thank you. So, hair back. Goggles on. Make sure you fix your goggles. I'm going to borrow with students. So I apologize for whoever's student's goggles I just stole. Okay, put the goggles on. So, we're going to light our Bunsen burner. To light our Bunsen burner, you're going to grab Bunsen burner hose. The hose is in the bottom drawer over underneath the graduated cylinders. We have two kinds of Bunsen burners, and I will show you how to light both. One of them has um, very limited controls. It only has an air control like this, no control for the gas. <laughs> I'm gonna light it first. If you grab this one, hook it into the hose. Again, if there's a smell in here, it's because there's gas line on. Check, everybody check your station for gas, please. Make sure it's off. Are we good? Is it off? Yes. Okay, thank you. To light this, when you light your Bunsen burner, the ones that do not have gas control on the Bunsen burner themselves, you're gonna take and make sure that this part right here, which is the part that controls the air, is closed so you just have gas. Light your match. Once you've lit your match, you're gonna come over here and turn the gas on. Now it's gonna take a minute to light because these leak a little bit and you're gonna get a little bit of air before the gas comes out, so it takes just a second to light. Once they have been lit, you need to make this a nice, hot Bunsen burner. To do that, it needs air. I'm gonna turn the bottom control on until I get some air. You want something like that. That's probably a little too much gas, so I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. If I turn it down just a little, you won't be able to hear it as much, but if you can hear your Bunsen burner, can you hear it? Yes, that usually means it's good and hot. Note the hottest part of the flame is the top of the inside blue cone right here. And when we cook this, we're gonna cook it right here. Are we good? Say yes. Yep. Yes, nice hot Bunsen burner. That's one of them. The other one, to work the other one, again, these get very hot, be careful. This has both a, ga an, a gas and an air control on the bottom is the gas righty tighty lefty loosey so tighten it up going right open it up about a full turn look at the air which is the top one close it down it's frequently on all the way if people haven't don't know how to light their bunsen burners and open it up a couple of good turns once you have done that you're going to do the same procedure you're going to take before you light the uh, before you turn the gas on light your match turn the gas on and it will light. This has a little too much air for the amount of gas, so I'm gonna decrease it just a little bit, and that's a nice hot flame. Are we good? Yeah. All right, to cook this, 
The first thing we're going to do, and again, sometimes it's going to adjust over time, so you want to keep it so it's a good hot flame. Um, probably the hardest part of today's experiment is the fact that the Bunsen burner hose is very stiff and you kind of have to move your apparatus to where your Bunsen burner is. So wherever your Bunsen burner seems happy, move your apparatus to where the Bunsen burner is. Are we good? All right. So let's assume we know how to light Bunsen burners. So I'm going to set it aside. In fact, I'm just going to turn it off and I'm going to set the rest of the experiment up. You're going to need a clay triangle. When you've grabbed your clay triangle, Make certain that when you set your crucible in it, your crucible doesn't fall through. And it's got to be reasonably stable. So put your hand under it, make sure it doesn't fall through, and set it on top of the ring here. Once you have done that, we're going to put the lid on it. Okay, we've got to be really careful that it doesn't fall through. And if you think it's a little too loose, you can actually take and bend this in a little bit. Most of these are broken or bendable, such that you can adjust them so that your crucible sits nice and stably in the clay triangle. Once you have that done, you're going to light your Bunsen burner. Leave your Bunsen burner alone after you've lit it correctly the first time because you hit a match to it and it should light right back up. We do not want anything nasty or dangerous to happen, so we're not going to start with the crucible all the way down. We're going to start with the crucible a little ways up. And you're going to slowly, over a period of about a minute, lower your crucible into the flame. So let it warm up a little bit and keep lowering down into the flame. When you've do it, done it nice and slowly, any water that may have gotten absorbed into the crucible itself will evaporate off slowly and will not break the crucible. Once your crucible is all the way down into the flame, we're going to start the chemistry portion of this. Now, how do we know a reaction is occurring? When magnesium reacts with air, anybody know what that looks like? It's like the white stuff in fireworks. You ever seen the bright white fireworks? That is magnesium. If you're not sure what that looks like and your instructor will allow you, have some fun with this, because clearly I will let you, and take a piece of magnesium and simply put it into the flame. If you take a piece of magnesium and you simply put it into the flame and you watch it, it will, can you see it? go bright white, that is the reaction of the magnesium with the oxygen. Are we good? So when your magnesium is doing that in the crucible, that is what you should see. So what are we going to do? We're going to take and let some air get into this. So at about every, um, I don't know, 30 seconds, you're going to need to take the lid off. Now, if you're like me and you have shaky hands, you actually need to get a um, wire mesh to put under this. I'll grab that in a second. But either way, you're going to grab the lid and take the lid off and get it some air. Now, if it's not hot enough, nothing will happen. Put the lid back on again as soon as it gets good and hot. And you know when it's good and hot, when the bottom of the crucible is glowing red, it will burst into flames, just like the magnesium I demonstrated. Are we cool? All right, so what's gonna happen? After it bursts into flames, after it bursts into flames and you let it cook, we're going to finish the experiment. So once it's burst into flames, you're going to keep heating it, taking the lid off until the flaming stops. Now notice it's still going to be bright red on the bottom and really, really hot. So it's going to look like something is happening, but that's just heat. Once the flames stop, the little bursting white stops, the reaction's done. Are you good? OK, but here's the problem. At this point, we have reacted with mostly nitrogen, and we have to get rid of it. So here's what we're going to do. After we have taken and weighed our crucible, add magnesium, reweighed and cooked, lifting the lid occasionally to add air, we are going to cool and add some water. So is your result to be 30 seconds? Uh, no, that's not, it doesn't exactly have to be 30 seconds, just get enough air in there so you get a real reaction going. Okay, we're going to have to cool and add water. Cool for about a minute, add about five or six drops of water. I think the exact number is in the lab. When you add the water, just take the deionized water that is in these containers, <clears throat> grab one of the little pipettes from here, and just take and add a few drops of water into it. When you add the water, it's going to react with both the oxide and the nitride, and it's going to get rid of the nitride. Are we cool? All right, once you have added the water, so we have cooked it, we have added the water, we're going to cook again, 
lid on, five minutes, cool and wait. Okay, cool to room temperature and weigh. You will then have to take and reheat, recool, and reweigh to make sure your reaction is done. You do not weigh until the very end after you've cooked the water products off. After you've cooked again, you don't weigh it until then, and you only weigh it when it's cool. Are you good? Yes? All right then. You're going to weigh the lid, the crucible, and the whole lot. Okay. All right, get to work. Thank you.